Hi everybody. In this short video, I want to talk about the area vector. The area vector is an important mathematical concept that's useful in topics such as electric flux, magnetic flux, fluid flux, gravitational flux, or generally the flux of any vector. I'm not going to talk about flux in this particular video. I'm just going to focus on the area vector itself. Okay, so imagine I've got an area in the xy plane. Uh, 3 meters along the x direction, 5 meters along the y direction. Now imagine I want to represent this area with some sort of vector. Well, the way we do that is the magnitude of the area vector will just be what we normally call the area, so in this case 15 square meters. The direction of the area vector is taken to be a direction perpendicular to the plane of the area. So in this particular case, my area is oriented in the xy plane. I could take the z direction to be the direction of the area vector. I could also use the negative z direction. Uh, it doesn't matter. So I could take the area vector to be this way or the area vector to be that way. Uh, in many cases, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you've got to be careful about a direction. Uh, it turns out in advanced physics, uh, the direction of the area vector that you take uh, corresponds to some mathematical way of how you traverse the perimeter. We're not going to get into that. Okay. So generally speaking then, an area vector consists of a magnitude, which would what we normally think of as the area, and the direction perpendicular to the plane of the area. Uh, this n hat represents a normal unit vector, uh, just an abbreviation for it. Normal is another word for perpendicular. Okay, so you might ask yourself, why do I take a direction perpendicular to the plane of the area rather than in the plane of the area? When I think of an area, don't I want something in the area to represent the area? Right, this perpendicular thing seems at first counterintuitive. But if we think of it a little more, it's actually necessary. For if we tried to represent this area with a vector in the plane of the area, I have an infinite number of choices. I could take this direction, that direction, that direction, that direction, that direction, that direction. Too many directions. If I choose a direction perpendicular to the plane of the area, I reduce infinity down to two. I have either this direction or that direction. And if I want to then also, uh, for real precision, if I care about the direction that I traverse the perimeter in some connecting theorems, then I can actually narrow that two down to one. Uh, in many cases, you don't need to worry about that. We can also have a differential version of this concept. So imagine I've got some area here, it's in the xy plane again, and I want to take a little chunk of that. I can define a little differential area vector for a little chunk of area. So I've got a little bitty dx, a little bitty dy. My area vector magnitude would just be dx dy. My direction would still be, uh, well, perpendicular to the plane of that area, which in this uh, case is the z hat direction. So for this example, if I've got x, y, z, uh, the differential area vector for this little dx, dy thing right here would be dx, dy, z hat. And again, I could have had a negative z hat if I wanted. So a differential area vector could be really useful in cases where you have some effect over a bent surface. So I can't describe this particular surface here with a single area vector because it's not all, my, the, 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 the perpendiculars to the surface are in different directions in each place. So right here, I could have a little bitty dA for this thing, dA vector, be that way. Right here, a little bitty chunk of surface, well, my dA vector would be this way. Right here, I've got a little bitty chunk of surface, my dA vector would be that way. Back here, my dA vector would be this way. All right, so over a, curvy surface that's not flat, the little differential dA vectors will everywhere be local, locally perpendicular to the plane of the surface. So you'll have a dA vector that varies over the whole surface itself. All right, that's more of an advanced topic, uh, but it can be very useful. 